Hello and welcome to Friday's uh, Masterclass edition of Cracking the Cryptic. Mark and I have been doing these crossword videos for the last few Fridays. And we're going to keep keep that going today, I hope. Um, if my computer works, you can see I'm on my laptop for a change. Uh, I've tried to make the screen about the right size. I'm getting all sorts of messages because I hardly ever use my laptop. Um, I have checked the snitch today as well. Now, the snitch is the unofficial rating of the Times, and this is a hard puzzle today. So that should be entertaining for one and all. Now this is today's puzzle I think. Let's click it. Um, that crossword does seem to be roughly in the right place so why don't we get cracking. Um, Hunter's neat house with outside pool. Fox. Okay I don't know what this is. Uh, I think it means hunter. The name of a hunter. And neat, as usual with these clues, I'm always hunting for short synonyms. And ox is a synonym for neat, believe it or not. I don't, I don't have my chamber's dictionary on this machine, so I can't prove that to you. Um, house can be abbreviated to HO as well. So I'm, I'm sort of toying with the idea in my mind of a word that, like, foxholer or something. No, it's not that. Um, and then I want a, a word for a pool outside. Pool beginning with F, maybe. Maybe four letters. Uh, fund? Fof! <laughs> That's ridiculous. That is ridiculous. I mean, you could see I was completely floundering. But now I put together all those little pieces of knowledge that I have and managed to come up with Fox Hound, which is um, a triumph, I think, for luck over skill. But there we go. So <laughs> a hunter is a fox hound. We've got Ox HO in fund for pool. And that is a good start. Right, let's try two down. Irish nationalist of old, briefly deceived by liberals. I think this is going to be... I don't know, actually. I, I, the way I read the clue is I'm looking for the name of an Irish nationalist, um, which could be a proper, na proper noun. Um, and then... Of old, actually I read that as, I don't think that's saying the Irish nationalist is an old name. I think that O, that old, could be the O we see in the clue. And then I want a word for deceived that I'm going to make uh, brief. I'm going to cut off its last letter, curtail it. Um, and then that's going to go by liberals, which, well, I think it's just going to be L. But it could be double L. L is a valid abbreviation of liberal. So I'm wondering whether liberals is trying to hint at double L there. Uh, but I, do, I don't know what that is, I'm afraid. So we're going to have to get some checking letters. Right, 5-5. Five, five. Like coaches often, with a certain animal magnetism. Like coaches often. Ah... Uh, Certain animal magnetism question mark. Don't know. Not, not having any ideas about that. Neither called for nor delivered without notes. By the way, we might get interrupted as well. If there's a, it could, uh, if, if the people come to clean the room, then I will have to, I will have to pause or let them in at least. Uh, I don't know what that one is. Destruction of age-old northern Irish location. Okay, well, if you read that clue as I just did which is to sort of, you know, I almost read it staccato, age-old Northern Irish location. It gave me the answer because I could see that age-old might be being anagrammed there because of the word destruction. If we destroy a string of letters, we're allowed to anagram them. And then uh, Northern can be abbreviated to N. So we're going to destroy age-old and N to give us the name of an Irish location. Well, Donegal is what we're looking for there. And that's just, so our foxhound, which so far really gave me nothing, has now yielded Donegal, which should allow us to do some crosses. So nine, as an alternative, I'm thinking all here, what satire is doing, what satire is doing the rounds? So I want it to be something like otherwise or what satire is doing the rounds? I have no clue what that's getting at. Right, I think let's try ten across. 
author's hoax involving gun lobbyists. Well, gun lobbyists, it's not something that comes up in the in British crossroads very much, but how can that not be NRA? That is the question. So I think it's Conran here, uh, the name of the author, obviously, and then we've got a con surrounding NRA for the gun lobbyists. And that does it give us any, uh, maybe three downs got an R in it. Like coaches often. Hurry, Harry. Hmm. I don't know, I haven't got it, I'm afraid. What's this one? Neither called for, nor delivered without notes. I still don't know what that is. Sorry about this. Right, 11 across. And brain's in holiday mode. Brain, wake up. Um, look that's direct eye contact. Yet at once cold somehow. Well, it is. It's an anagram of yet at once and C, which is an invalid abbreviation for cold. You might have seen that on your taps. One tap probably has H on it. One should have C on it. Uh, the cold tap should have C on it. So if we anagram that because we're treating those that string of letters somehow, somehow there is telling us we're allowed to anagram the previous string. And that gives, oh, that gives us an O in six down. Spanish runner, I'm immediately thinking of the Ebro. I'm going to put it in. I don't know whether it's the Ebro River. That, that um, You have to have an encyclopedic knowledge of rivers <laughs> to be confident that whenever a river clue comes up, you're going to be able to solve it in a crossword. Um, but uh, you may be saying, why on earth am I thinking of a river here when the clue says runner? Well, believe it or not, because water runs. <laughs> Um, cryptic crossword solvers think that rivers uh, and runner, riv a river and a runner are synonymous. You may also have seen the word flower used in the same way, because if we say flower slightly differently, we could pronounce flower as flower. And what flows? Well, a river does. So I think it's going to be Ebro. I haven't read the rest of the clue. So we've got gold medal initially. Miss Gold. Oh, MBE. Right, so we've got gold, which is OR, which is the heraldic tincture for gold. Um, and then we've got the medal, which is the member of the British Empire, the MBE. Um, and that's initially missing. Uh, so the M is removed and we turn up the whole string. So we turn up or BE and we get Ebro, which is the river. So a little bit of knowledge is a dangerous thing there. Nine across as an alternative. Uh, doing the rounds, orbit or, or oh, must be something to do with orbiting, right? Okay, as an alternative, or what satire is doing? Biting, yes, yeah, satire is biting, isn't it? Um, so orbiting uh, is doing the rounds, isn't it? If something is orbiting, it is doing the rounds. So that's a very cleverly worded clue. Now, what's this then? Agi agitated, maybe? Agitator. One stirring is an agitator. Right, okay, so how does this break down? And again, we've talked about this a lot in previous weeks, but let's do it again here. What is the A doing in this clue? Why is it necessary? That's what you should always be answer, asking when you see the indefinite article in the middle of a clue. Because this clue would sort of semantically mean the same thing. If we said one stirring private army to resistance, and one stirring a private army to resistance. There is no distinction in terms of uh, the overall sense of that, that, that sentence, is there? They both mean the same thing. So cryptic crosswords should have nothing superfluous in them, cryptic clues. So why is the A there? It must be there because it's needed for the wordplay. And it is here because that A is in fact that A at the start of the answer. A private is a GI. GI as in GI Joe. Army to resist. Okay, well, an army is the territorial army, the TA. Two is plain again, that just goes in. And resistance, those of you familiar with Ohm's law will, will know V equals IR, and that gives us agitator, which is somebody who stirs. Um, so we could do that one. Now we never looked at seven down, let's try that. Be preoccupied and worried following difficulty. Um, ah, nah, 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 what's this? This well, I know it ends in eight, A T E, 
because if some, something worries you, it eats away at you. So worried in the past tense is eight. Um, so I need a word for a difficulty, three letters with an I in it. And, and it, the whole thing means be preoccupied. Um, obsess. <sighs> Why can't I just write it in? I'm so... Ah! Um, to be preoccupied is to... Um, 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 hang on, I'm good. I, I, I don't want to move away. This will, this will, otherwise it will bug me for the rest of the solve. Be preoc fixate. Yeah, if you're in a fix, you're you're you've got a problem, haven't you? You've got a difficulty, and if you fixate on something, you're preoccupied with it. Right. So at least we didn't have to come back to that. Right. Let's try twelve. This will give us the second, well, the the first letter of the second word in three down. So it would be useful. Oh, okay. Bond sprang up to speak. Now, again, we've talked a bit about this, but words like or phrases like to speak or by the sounds of it or we hear, they always indicate homophones. So we need to think of a word that means sprang up, like leapt. Um, Uh, it's not left, I don't think. Um, and then we need to spell it differently, but so that it would sound the same if we said it. And that will be a word that gives us an, a, a word that means bond. I'm sort of toying with, I'm in two minds as to whether the way to approach this is to try and think of words that mean bond or words that may, mean sprang up. Spray, if something springs up, jumps. I don't know. I haven't got it. OK, let's move on. 13 down. Investing euros originally, Welshman's money is soon spent. Investing euros. One thing here that, that strikes me as slightly odd is that euro, the euro can be abbreviated to an E. So I'm wondering why we've got euros originally, which would tend to indicate the original letter of the word euro, which would still be an E. So Welshman's money. Well, there are various you know, Welshmen that sometimes come up in crosswords, like die would be a Welshman. Uh, Ivor, Ivor the engine. Um, Money is soon spent. No, I don't know. That would be a really useful one as well. I get the starting letters to 14 and 15. Let's try 16. Or we could try 16 down, actually. That would be even more useful. Nervously excited, mostly, with treat being arranged. Mm, okay, well, this is... Mm, I want this to be something like a dither. <laughs> Nerv I think it means nervously excited. Oh, could it be a Twitter? Yes, okay. I think it is. Okay. Uh, most, mo if we take most of the word with, we could take the wit part of it, couldn't we? Wit and treat are then going to be arranged. That gives us the eight letters we need for the anagram fodder. There's no H anymore in it. And then we can make a Twitter. And if you are a Twitter, you are not on Twitter necessarily, but you are nervously excited. Now that's going to be hopefully useful. 16 across simple life at sea with recreational vehicle in coastal area abroad. Algarve? Um, why is that Algarve? <laughs> That's a coastal area in Portugal. Um, a place I know well because I golf there occasionally. Why is that Algarve? Simple life at sea. With recreational RV, is that a. Oh, algae. Oh, that's very clever. Okay, golly. I was not. I. I'm not really familiar with RV being an abbreviation for recreational vehicle, but it clearly is because that's how this glue must work. Now I've seen it. So RV is a recreational vehicle. And then we put, we've got simple life at sea, which is algae, A-L-G-A-E. 
and that's got RV in it. So that's how that clue works. We've got simple life at sea algae with RV in. So we put the, the RV inside the algae, we get Algarve, which is the coastal area abroad. Now, what about, well, let's try, let's try the, the W one. Noggin word. Noggin is your head. Noggin word. Oh, well, noggin word that's contrived. Okay, so again, here, why is the constructor using knocking in inverted commas? It's weird. It just looks strange. And now I understand. I haven't got the answer yet. But noggin word that's contrived is saying I need to contrive. I need to make an anagram of noggin word, I think. Um, and it's going to give me a word that means offence. Uh, an offence is going to... Oh, golly, what is this then? Uh, Oh, window something? No, we've only got one W to cause an offence. The offence is going to be... I don't know it, actually. I haven't got it yet, anyway. Wrongdoing. Oh, okay, that took too much unscrambling. Um, okay, well, at least we understood it, and at least we got it now. Do we turn our attention? That could be something train them, like coaches often. With a certain animal magnetism. What's this as well? That's a strange start, isn't it? Uh-oh, O'Connell or something? Oh, I bet it is actually. I, I don't know enough about my Irish history to know that O'Connell was an Irish nationalist, but uh, O'Connell would certainly be an Irish surname, and it does work with the, the, the wordplay, because I've got O for old, and then if you deceive someone, you con them. So in the past tense, we have most of the word conned without its end, and then liberals for double L, so I quite like O'Connell there. Now, what is this horse train? With a certain animal magnetism. Horse drawn. Ah, that's nice. That's better. Like coaches often, coaches are often horse drawn. And if if you're uh if you're drawn to a horse, you would have, you know that animal would have a certain magnetism. And that will give us a chance. What's this meld? No. Bond bond could be meld. But meld, however I spell it, doesn't mean weld. Weld, that's better. Yes, a, a spring would well up, wouldn't it? So, in the, so sprang up would be in the past tense, weld. If weld up, as your tears might well up. W-E-L-L-E-D sounds exactly the same as W-E-L-D, doesn't it? But they have different meanings, and to bond is to weld. Now, that's good. Okay, so can we get this one then? Which must begin new end, doesn't it? So neither called for nor delivered without notes delivered without notes sort of improvised un i don't know, I don't know. conrad why have i got con why have i got conrad here it's conrad that makes better undelivered or something um what's going on what hoax oh gosh okay Okay, that's clever, actually. So cod is a word which means a hoax, as is con. So I didn't think of Conrad. I thought of Conran. I think they probably both are authors. But anyway, there we go. If we get D in there, now all of a sudden this one looks like it's under something to me. Neither called for nor delivered without notes. Or is it is it undelivered or is it under something? Um no it's not going to be undelivered it's got delivered in the clue nor delivered without under I haven't quite got it but I think we will get that one especially if we can get 13 across and we've got loads of starting letters we can use down here let's try this one in front of a court I like drama occasionally um, one act, I think, is the answer here. Dra drama occasionally. 
can be a you can get a one act play or a two act play. Um, so like drama occasionally I think is one act. So I think that's the definition. In front of a court, well court can be abbreviated to C T. Um, so I think of in front so A C T is a court in this clue. And in front of that we put I, which is the Roman numeral for the number one. So that's giving us the word play, and I think it's justified with the definition as well. So 23 across. One may be poaching. Very old hat from French. King. Trespasser is what I want this to be. Yeah, okay. That is right. Trespasser. And the way I think this this is justified is a trespasser may be somebody who's poaching. So one may be poaching is the definition. Um, very something is very old hat from French. It would be tre passé. It wouldn't just be passé, which would be old hat. It would be really old hat. So it'd be tre, which is the French word for very. So very old hat tre passé, uh, which of course doesn't have the R in the end. So the king here is the is the letter R. Uh, and that's from, I think, Latin, which uh, king can be rex, R-E-X. So trespasser is what we've got there. Incidentally, king can also be K uh, from chess notation. So look out for that. Just because a word has multiple abbreviations doesn't mean that one always takes precedence. A short riddle bringing sceptical reactions can be something like... Uh, uh, Skeptical. I wanted it to be uh huh. Like you might go uh huh. Um, a short riddle. Skeptical reaction. It must be something like as if. Yes. Yeah, okay. So ri ri riddle is not just a word that you know is sort of. You know, I'm trying to think of a name of a good. I've got loads of good riddles, but they take too long um, to explain. So, so I'm not going to do a riddle. But you know, but you know, like a, a, a presumably a riddle as a, a noun, uh, or in, in the normal way that it would be treated as a noun. We're all familiar familiar with because if we're doing cryptic crosswords, we're probably familiar with the word riddle. But riddle can be to sift as well, or to sieve. Um, so a shortened form of that, a short sift is sif. Put that with the A, we get as if, which is certainly a sceptical reaction. Now, can we get this one now? What do we think this is going to be without looking at the clue? Can't think of anything. Um, no, can't think of anything. Oh, it's get escaping, getting away. Using key, which is the escape key, probably ESC. You can find that on, on my laptop. Um, oh, escapism. No, oh, I was wrong. Okay, because then map is involved also, is saying we also, to create the the whole word here, we need to involve, which is um, a cunning anagram indicator. If you get involved with something, you, you you make it more complex, don't you? So map is, we're looking at the letters map is, and we need to anagram them. And if we do that properly, we can create escapism. And that's going to be the answer there. Now, this has the horrible look of being a musical term, but it no, no, win some maybe. Be partially successful. You win some, you lose some. <laughs> if you win some, you're partially successful. Um, and if you have, if you have, if uh, and a, a word for appeal, winsome. If you're winsome, you are appealing. Um, now we've got an e at the start of twenty-seven. In a prime position. I'm wondering if there's a numerical reference, like uh, I'm trying to think of a prime that begins with e, and I'm not coming up with anything good. Um, in the Spanish Open for one hour. Well, the Spanish is often L. Open for one hour. In the prime position, 11th. That wasn't a very good attempt to come up with uh, the prime beginning with E, was it? Because if I'd gone a bit further than 8, I would have got one. Um, why is this right? The Open is an event, I suppose. Open for one is an event. It's going on at the moment. The British Open, or the Open, I shouldn't call it the British Open. That's that's not right. Um, but the Open is going on at the moment. The Open is a kind of event, followed by hour for eight, H for hour, and we get 11th, which is in a prime position. And we get... Hmm, should we try 17 first? This is a bit this is a bit risky, but we'll go for it. Comparatively comparatively obscure. 
UEFA intermediary rounds. Wow, okay, I don't know what this is. Um, but the way I read it is I need a word for UEFA and then I'm going to put a word for an intermediary around that word for UEFA, which but I can't think of any words for UEFA. Ah, no, I've had another idea. What about if it was a hidden fainter? That's clever. Yeah, it is. Okay. So, um, it's one of these, and every time it's crossword, or almost every one of them, they are <laughs> sometimes hard to see, as you saw there. Uh, and i that's because I misread the clue or I misunderstood what it was trying to tell me. So, we are looking for a word that means comparatively obscure. The answer's fainter. And if you look, at the string of letters, U-E-F-A-I-N-T-E-R-M-E-D-I-A-R-Y. That string of letters surrounds the word spelt out F-A-I-N-T-E-R. So it's a hidden answer. And the word rounds is telling us that. So it's, it's hard to spot, but it is there. And it gives us a starting letter for 18. Coming out of British Army Corps, upset chap. Coming out of British Army Corps. Uh, I think this is going to be, it's not this, but I think it's going to be something like exigent. The way, the way I've got that is, you know, a short synonym for a chap is a gent. Emergent. So coming out, if something's coming out, it's emergent. And two, okay, yeah, so two British Army Corps are the Royal Engineers, RE, and I think it's the Mechanical Engineers, ME. Um, they are two corps of the, of the British Army. So we've got RE and ME, upset, it's a down clue. So if we upset them, we turn them upside down. That gives us ME. We add gent to it, we get emergent, which must be the answer. Okay, I've been holding off on this one for a long time. Let's try this one then. Um, Colour. I want it to be tangerine, but it's clearly not. Uh, live golf or live golf. Live golf, controversial topic. Um, repeatedly cut up. Colour film. Cut orange. Colour film. Live golf. Oh, I'm not sure. Sorry. Uh, repeat. Oh, golf repeatedly. Uh, in international radio alphabet, uh, golf signals the letter G. So there's going to be two G's in this because golf repeatedly is cutting. Uh, it's cutting something. Oops, I think this is the name of a colour. Um, I haven't got it. I think we must. We might. We might have to try. Let's try twenty-two. High point. I'm thinking apex. In meeting of mirror and time. So it is apex. If you mirror somebody. You you copy them. You ape them. And times uh, three times two. We might represent as three x two. So times is just the letter x, and we get apex there. So we get that one. Let's try and get this one. One's exploited, unlike Victoria. Ooh, um, one's exploited. I want this to be, we are not amused. I'm thinking of amused as the answer here, because that's got used in it. One's. I'm wondering, one apostrophe S, can that be an? As in, I... I is type thing. I am. I think that might be right. And if you're unlike Victoria, I like that for amused. She was famous for saying she was not amused. Um, so, okay, let's try this one, uh, which we have not looked at. So that's something. I'm grateful. Thank you for opening tin. Tin mm, cantaloupe. Yeah. Okay, I haven't understood why, but I do think it's cantaloupe because it's a fruit and it's got can in it. Um, 
I'm grateful ta, as in thank you, T-A. Uh, I'm grateful for, maybe, bound. Wow, okay. Okay, so it's quite convoluted, I think, how this clue breaks down. I think I'm grateful for is synonymous with thank you, which is ta, T-A. And that ta is opening up several things. It's opening up a word for a tin, which is the word can, followed by a word for a bound. If you buy, if you jump somewhere, you if you jump somewhere, you bound. You, you, a bounding is is to jump, isn't it? So loping, and, and we've got lope containing superior. Now we looked at this. I think it was last week where you, believe it or not, is a synonym for the upper classes, um, which is so we've got lope around you well altogether the way it works then is we've got can loop around you so can loop around tar to give us cantaloupe which is the fruit now okay so we've got three left and we have looked at all of them investing euros originally welshman oh, welshman's money money could be sent i suppose is soon spent Something soon spent. It's. Oh, I keep wanting to think of like profligate. Um, investing euros originally. Welshman. Reese. David. Welshman's money is soon spent. So I think I haven't got this, unfortunately. We might well have to get this one, I think. I need that first letter. Um, neither called for, undeserved, nor delivered without notes. I like undeserved. I only just thought of it, but if you're something's not called for, it's undeserved, isn't it? Nor delivered without notes. Right, if something is not delivered, it's unserved. I think if a writ is un, you know, it's not delivered, it's unserved. And that surrounds musical notes, D and E. And that gives us undeserved, which means neither called for, well, it means not called for, undeserved. Right, oh, ever, evanescent. Right, Evan is a, certainly a Welshman. So, right. So, what we've got here is, I think the constructor's being very careful here because I think Euro can be, be abbreviated to E, but Euros probably doesn't have an abbreviation of E. I'm not sure about that, but that's what I'm guessing is going on, which is why the constructor is saying we need, if we're going to use the word Euros in the clue, to be technically correct, if I'm going to extract E from that, I can't just leave it alone. I have to say it's the first letter. So that's what originally is doing. So we've got investing the original letter of Euros, the E. We take a word that means Welshman apostrophe S. So Welshman's Evans. Put the E in. Evans. And then we add a money to that. Sent. And we get the whole answer. Now what on earth is this then? Cut up. Ex exaggerate is it it must be exaggerate I don't know why I know it's got double G in it <laughs> okay let's try and work out oh cut up could be axe could it is that what's going on Phil okay let's try that let's try that if you color something you you do exaggerate don't you you give it a spin now the film, well, the shortest synonym for film, and it comes up over and over again in crosswords, the world over, is E.T. So we've got E.T. Now, which which E and which T do you think we're talking about here? I think we're talking about the E where the cursor is, this E and this T. I think that's, that's the E.T. that this, this film is. And then so live and are are synonymous. Um, we are, we live. Those two things are synonymous, aren't they? So R, R and live. Double G for our, our golf repeatedly. 
and x is to cut and that whole string reverses and we get exaggerate for color and there i think we have solved the puzzle now hang on let me check let's see whether or not holiday brain has worked and yes it has <laughs> so a tricky crossword but we got through it a couple of shanks along the way uh, but hopefully there won't be any shanks in the British Open. Um, and I enjoyed that mightily, as usual. I hope, I hope I'm able to upload this. Of course, when I'm on my laptop, things are never as smooth as we might wish. Um, but let us know if you enjoy these videos, especially the crossword videos, because um, we, we sometimes feel we're doing this for a very small number of people. Um, and while we're really grateful those people enjoy it, um, YouTube does not like these videos at all. It really downplays them. And I think it's totally unfair because cryptic crosswords are just so, they're so fantastic. And I think if we can get more people interested in them, um, yeah, they could be, they could be bigger than they are. That would be a good thing. So anyway, let us know in the comments and drop the video a like maybe. And we'll be back later with another edition of Cracking the Cryptic.